A little while ago, I recorded an RC race video for a local RC club here in town. And this is the camera I used. It's a little Sony AS-10 action cam, and I used it for most of the action footage in the video. And this is the rig it sat on for the entire video. This is a homemade camera stabilization rig, and it's made out of primarily half-inch copper tubing, like all of my other camera stabilization rigs I've made. And what it works to do is reduce the uh, orientation change of the camera when you're running or moving around. If you hold it in just the right spot here and move your arm back and forth, forwards or backwards or up and down, you'll notice the camera really doesn't change orientation much. It'll change position, but it won't actually pivot around or rotate. So it uh, worked really well, and today I wanted to give you an overview of what makes up this entire rig and uh, what would go into making one of these if you wanted to. At the front end here, we've got a solid copper camera mount and it's held together with bolts and solder, so it's super incredibly rigid. And it's really important to have a rigid camera mount on a unit like this one, because if your camera mount wobbles, your footage is going to be shaky. It's as simple as that. And I had to play around with the design of this camera mount for a while before I got it right. And I'm sure as long as you're careful when you're building this thing, you should be able to replicate what I've done here fairly easily. Traveling down the length of this thing, we've got about four feet of copper tubing, which give this rig its extreme resistance to wobbling back and forth like this, and kind of up and down like that. And then at the ends here, we've got two sets of steel weights that give it its resistance to rotation back and forth like that. So when you're holding this thing, it's pretty hard to rotate it in any direction whatsoever. So that was all good, but how do you actually build one of these things? Well, they're pretty simple to build. Uh, you'll want to get your hands on a bunch of half-inch copper tubing. You'll need about six feet of it, and see if you can find a little tiny bit of uh, three-quarter inch copper tubing. I just got a little adapter. Uh, meant for three-quarter inch copper tubing because I didn't want to buy like a six-foot piece of three-quarter inch tubing for this project Because you only need like an inch of it or so and Chop down a four foot long chunk of your half inch copper tubing and then take a vise of some sort and crush down about three-quarters uh, Inwards like that and you just want to pancake it in your vise and then do the same thing to a four inch chunk here Chop down a four inch chunk of half inch tubing and then just crimp the end up with the vise again And then you should be able to drill some holes in those crushed up ends and they'll bolt together like that. And then for this piece here, this is a little bit more involved but it's not too bad as long as you take your time. You'll want to rotate your vise about 90 degrees or rot rotate the piece in your vise 90 degrees and crush about an inch and a half of the other end like that. I sort of bent it off to one side so that the camera has a little more room on the top side like that. It doesn't end up bumping against the back of this thing there. But uh, I guess that's sort of optional. I just thought it worked a little better and then take your three quarter inch piece it's about just over an inch maybe and just crush it down into a flat pancake and then I rested a couple uh, rods of solder on top of my half inch tubing plopped my three quarter inch tubing on top and then just soldered them together with the torch and of course make sure you prep the surfaces first and use some flux in the process and then I drilled a hole with a uh, I think it was like a five sixteenths inch drill bit and threw a bolt through it, and my camera sat on top quite happily. The back of the rig is super simple. I basically soldered on a T-joint to the end of the four-foot piece I showed you earlier, and then I threw a couple eight-inch pieces off either side, capped them off on the ends, drilled some holes through them, and then uh, threw some weight stacks on top, just using some uh, washers and whatnot. And I sort of offset the weight stacks, so this one sort of is you sort of see they look different. This one comes off on the bottom, this one comes off on the top. That's just to try and get the center of gravity as close to the center of this entire unit as you can. As far as hardware goes, I'm just using standard quarter inch coarse thread or 20 TPI uh, bolts and wing nuts and stuff and just quarter inch washers here. Just base stuff out if I need to. And I'm just using these for the entire rig, top to bottom. If your camera threads onto or is compatible with standard tripods, these, this hardware will thread directly into the camera mounting hole in the bottom of your camera. So you can use these exact same bolts for your camera mount right here. Once you've got this unit all put together and you've got weights on it and your camera strapped to the bottom, it's time to record some test shots to see if it works. So the first thing you want to do is try and find the balance point of it. Mine's about two thirds of the way up here. And I've made a little mark so I can find it again fairly easily whenever I need to. And you want to hold it here when you're recording. And that way, when your arm moves around, the camera doesn't change orientation. Like if I hold it in the wrong area, the camera wants to pivot when I move. 
but if I find that area right there, my arm moves, the camera pretty much stays pointing straight ahead. And then I just like to hold it like this. You want to make sure it's vertical. I haven't had very good luck uh, recording like that or anything. So either like this or like this, depending on whether or not you want to follow the action from the top or from a nice low down sort of bottom perspective. And I like to hold my arm in sort of an L shape here. I find it provides the smoothest footage. Then you basically just run after your action and record it. One thing I thought I'd mention that's kind of interesting is because you have three levels of rotation, you can rotate your camera like that, you can rotate it sort of back and forth like that, and it'll also pivot a little bit on top. You can get any sort of angle you want. You're not going to come across an angle you can't get with this rig. So it's super versatile, and I've also used this from a standstill position to follow cars around corners and stuff. You just hold it out in front of you, super stable, you have lots of control over everything, and uh, you can get some pretty cool shots that way. Well, I think that's about all I've got for you today. Hopefully you get some use out of this video in the future if you plan to make one of these things or at least found that video somewhat entertaining. Uh, thanks for watching.